Welcome to Vernal Pools 101. I'm Brett Thielen, Science Director with the Harris Center for Conservation Education. This four-part slideshow series introduces you to the exquisite ephemeral world of vernal pools. Our other slideshows, which are available on the Harris Center's YouTube channel, cover what vernal pools are and how to know if you found one, why vernal pools matter, and some tips for exploring vernal pools in the field. In this slideshow, we'll dig deep into the identification of amphibian egg masses that you might find while exploring vernal pools in the Monadnock region of southwest New Hampshire. As a reminder, vernal pools are depressions in the forest floor that fill with melting snow and spring rain and often dry up by late summer or fall. How do you know if you found a vernal pool and not just a wicked big puddle in the woods? Vernal pools are defined both physically and biologically, and both things need to be present for something to be considered a vernal pool. The physical definition is that it's a pool that dries up at some point. The biological definition is that certain species known as obligate species breed in that pool. Obligate species are species who require vernal pools for their long-term survival, primarily for use as breeding sites. They're also known as primary or indicator species. And in our part of New Hampshire, there are four species, fairy shrimp, which we'll touch on very briefly, wood frogs, spotted salamanders, and Jefferson complex salamanders. There are more than 500 other species who use vernal pools in some way or another, but don't require them for their survival. Things like the dragonfly and spotted turtle seen here. We won't be talking about those today. Citizen scientists who are documenting vernal pools are asked to provide evidence of breeding activity by obligate species. In the case of fairy shrimp, their very presence is enough to indicate breeding. These magical crustaceans spend their entire lives in a single vernal pool basin. Most of that time, they exist as eggs on the vernal pool bottom. In order to hatch, the eggs must dry out and then rehydrate, freeze, and then thaw. The adult portion of the life cycle can last just six weeks or so. The focus of this slideshow is amphibian egg mass identification, so we won't spend too much time talking about fairy shrimp, but they are a magical denizen of vernal pools in New England, and it's great to know that they're out there. When it comes to spotted salamanders and Jefferson complex salamanders, another piece of evidence that they're breeding in a vernal pool is a spermatophore. These are the little packets of DNA deposited by male salamanders on the pool bottom for female salamanders to retrieve and use to fertilize their eggs. Spermatophores are small and often attached to twigs or leaf points. They may look like breadcrumbs sprinkled on the bottom of the vernal pool. Spermatophores are fairly short-lived, as female salamanders may retrieve them shortly after they've been deposited. If female salamanders haven't retrieved them, they tend to deteriorate after just a few days in the vernal pool. Fairy shrimp are present in fewer than 10% of the vernal pools in the Monadnock region, and spermatophores begin to deteriorate after just a few days. Wood frog sperm is invisible to the naked eye. As a result, the easiest and best way to find breeding activity in vernal pools is to look for the egg masses deposited by spotted salamanders, pictured here, wood frogs, and Jefferson salamanders. Depending on species, these eggs might take two to eight weeks to hatch, and so stick around long enough for us to find them. They're also identifiable to species. Let's take a tour through the three different kinds of egg masses you might find in local vernal pools and the species who've left them behind. We'll start with the wood frog. Wood frog egg masses are usually the first to appear in local vernal pools because wood frogs are particularly cold hardy and often migrate before spotted salamanders do. This picture shows wood frog egg masses in different stages of development. The one in the center is very compact and newly deposited, probably about the size of walnut. Shortly after they're deposited, egg masses start to absorb water and increase in size. The mass to the bottom right is probably half a day old. The one to the left may be several days. By the time they're done, they'll be at the size of softballs. Wood frog egg masses are often laid close to the surface of the water in large communal clusters, 
each female lays just one mass. But laying together confers a number of benefits, including protection from predation and increased water temperature. Each one of those little dark embryos concentrates solar energy and increases the temperature of the water around it. So when you have wood frog egg masses that are grouped together, the water temperature can actually be several degrees warmer in the middle of that cluster, which helps them develop more quickly. Here are several pictures of the exact same egg mass to show their development over time. The one on the left was just deposited by the wood frog. About eight hours later, we got the picture on the right. And a day or two later, that same egg mass was this size. You can see again that the complete mass is the size of a softball or grapefruit. And wood frog egg masses are distinctive because there's a little ball of goo around each individual egg, which gives them a very bumpy appearance that you can spot even from a distance. Wood frog egg masses are often laid communally in just one or two sections of the pool. This picture shows approximately six or seven wood frog egg masses from six or seven different wood frogs. Each mass may contain up to 12 or 1500 individual eggs. Wood frog eggs can take anywhere from 10 days to three weeks to hatch. The warmer the pool is, the more quickly the eggs develop, the less time it takes for them to hatch. As they progress, they start to lose that spherical and bubbly appearance and look more matte-like on the surface of the water. They also often grow a symbiotic algae in the egg mass. This is a beneficial relationship both for the algae and for the wood frog larvae. The larvae, like any animal, produces waste that serves as fertilizer for the algae. And the algae, like every plant, produces oxygen that helps the embryos breathe. Here's a fun treasure hunt. Can you see the wood frog egg masses in this vernal pool? Whenever I'm looking at a vernal pool, I scan the surface of the water for a bubbly appearance. That might be the first sign that there are wood frog eggs there. And here they are. This picture shows wood frog tadpoles just hatching out of their egg masses. You can see how lush the algae has become in their egg masses. That will actually be these tadpoles' very first meal. After they hatch, wood frog tadpoles will stay close to what remains of their egg mass for a day or two, feeding on that algae and doing their best to impersonate hemlock needles so predators won't find them. Next, we'll move on to spotted salamanders. Spotted salamanders are arguably the poster child for vernal pools. They're large salamanders, six to eight inches long, with bright yellow polka dots. They spend 95% of their lives underground, except for the few weeks of each year that they spend in vernal pools. They can live 20 to 30 years. Spotted salamander egg masses have a distinctly different appearance than wood frog egg masses. Whereas wood frog egg masses are spherical in shape and bumpy, spotted salamander egg masses can be kidney shaped and also have a smoother appearance. That's because each cluster of spotted salamander eggs is surrounded by a firm gelatinous envelope, the texture of jello that keeps them all together. In addition, spotted salamander eggs often have a visible wide membrane around each individual embryo that gives the eggs a glowing appearance. The outer casing on spotted salamander eggs can be clear, as in the egg mass to the bottom right, or milky white in color, as in the egg mass to the top left. This is just a genetic difference like hair color. Like wood frog eggs, spotted salamander eggs are often laid along twigs. This is the same egg mass under the water to the left and lifted out of the water to the right. As you can see, it's difficult to see the texture of the eggs while they're underwater. It's much easier to see if they've been gently lifted out of the water. Individual spotted salamanders can lay one to three egg masses, usually one primary egg mass and then a slightly smaller satellite egg mass or two, as you can see here. Like wood frog eggs, spotted salamander egg masses start off small and increase in size as they absorb water. However, they can also vary in number of individual eggs and in size based on the individual salamander. All three of the pictures here are spotted salamander eggs held in the same hand for scale. 
over time, many spotted salamander egg masses develop algal growth. This is again a beneficial relationship. Like any plant, the algae needs fertilizer, and so it uses the waste of the developing embryos to fertilize itself. In return, the algae, like any plant, produces oxygen, which is used to the benefit of the embryos. Studies have shown that spotted salamander eggs with algae have increased survival and faster development than those without. Even more amazing, several years ago, a study found that there's algae inside the very cells of the embryo that produces not just oxygen, but also glucose, kind of like an internal solar panel. Spotted salamander eggs can hatch in anywhere from four to eight weeks, depending on temperature. In these pictures, you can see the larvae just about to hatch out. On the picture on the right, the little um, appendages at the base of the neck are the external gills that will help that larvae breathe underwater. Here's another exquisite photo of spotted salamander eggs preparing to hatch. You can really get a good glimpse of the feathery gills at the base of their neck in this photo. Just a note on this picture, it was taken by sandwiching the egg masses between two glass plates. That's what gives each egg that hexagonal look. In real life, they're much more spherical in shape. Spotted salamanders and wood frogs are by far the most common vernal pool breeding species found in the Monadnock region. However, in a few places, we have a third vernal pool amphibian, the Jefferson blue spotted complex salamander. The reason for this complicated name is that there are several different species wrapped up into one hybrid, the Jefferson salamander, the blue spotted salamander, which where they co-occur frequently hybridize to create the Jefferson blue spotted complex. This is a really complicated genetic relationship that challenges the very notion of what it means to be a species. These hybrids practice what is called kleptogenesis. Klepto meaning stealing, genesis, genetic material. So the females of these salamanders will absorb spermatophores from true Jeffersons or true blue spotted salamanders in order to initiate egg development, but they won't pass along any of the genetic material from those males to their offspring. Their egg masses also have an outer gelatinous envelope, similar to spotted salamander egg masses, but the texture is quite different. Where spotted salamander egg masses are firm, like jello, Jefferson salamander egg masses are loose and drippy, like jelly. They also often have fewer individual eggs, and the inner membrane around each egg is much less visible. So where spotted salamander eggs have that glowing, disc-like appearance, these look more like pinpoints. Jefferson salamander eggs are often laid linearly along twigs instead of in a kidney or spherical shape like spotted salamander eggs. Because Jefferson salamanders are more cold tolerant than spotted, they also tend to appear earlier in the season. Here's another great example of that linear and loose drippy appearance found in a vernal pool in Keene. Here are some Jefferson salamander egg masses further along in their development. This picture also shows another key indicator. If you look to the left, you'll see some of these eggs have little white pearls in them instead of embryos. Those are places where the embryos didn't develop and instead a fungus took over the individual egg. Jefferson salamanders have a high percentage of these inviolable eggs, likely related to the hybridization process. So if you find a loose, drippy salamander egg with lots of little pearls in it, it could be a Jefferson salamander egg mass. So here are spotted salamander and Jefferson salamander egg masses side by side, so you can see the differences. The spotted salamander egg mass is firm and holds its shape out of water, like jello. The Jefferson salamander egg mass is loose and drippy, like jelly. In addition, there are a no, number of more individual eggs in the spotted salamander egg mass than in the Jefferson salamander egg mass. This is quite common. Here's another side-by-side -side comparison where you can look at the individual membranes around each individual embryo from spotted salamanders compared to Jefferson salamanders. In spotted salamanders, those membranes are wide and disc-like, and they have a glowing appearance, which you can see even from afar. Jefferson salamanders, on the other hand, 
That membrane is very narrow and difficult to see except under very good lighting. There, the embryos look more like little pinpricks or dots. So here we have two different egg masses deposited by two different species. Can you tell which is which? That top mass is from a spotted salamander. You can tell by the wider membrane around each individual embryo that looks very disc-like, as well as by its spherical shape. Down below, we have the Jefferson complex salamander. The membranes around each individual embryo are much narrower. The mass itself is laid linearly along the twig rather than spherically around it. And there's even one of those little pearl looking inviable embryos in the bottom. Here's one last look at a side-by-side -side comparison at the three types of amphibian egg masses you might encounter in vernal pools in the Monadnock region. To the left is our Jefferson complex salamander, loose and drippy like jelly and laid linearly along a twig. In the center, our spotted salamander, which is firm like jello and often in spherical or kidney shaped masses. And the far right, we have our wood frog, which if we want to continue with the food comparisons, instead of jelly or jello, we have tapioca pudding, bumpy and lumpy and spherical. There's a great video produced by the University of Maine that shows each of these in situ in a vernal pool, which I'll link to down below on YouTube. That concludes our whirlwind tour through egg mass identification for Monadnock region vernal pools. Now that you're a pro, you'll recognize that the picture we're looking at is of many clusters of wood frog eggs. If you're looking for more resources, we have several available at harriscenter.org, including a downloadable egg mass ID sheet that you can print out and take with you in the field. And of course, I'm always happy to answer your questions at thielen at harriscenter.org.